Hi and welcome to Spode's Abode. Today I'm going to be looking at the Solaire Reno Wi-Fi electric heater. Uh, mine's broken, I'm going to rip it apart, I'm going to fix it. So let's start with a, a little bit of backstory to explain how I ended up here. A couple of years ago I decided to upgrade the heating system in my house and most of the electric heaters uh, with Wi-Fi support were coming in about £300 a piece. Long story short, I found this company Solaire, they're a British company, who were making uh, these panel heaters that were coming in at about £120. Still very basic electric heaters, I mean at the end of the day they're electric heaters, they're all very similar from an efficiency perspective. Ran the whole house with them, but one by one they slowly failed. The switch that's used for actually turning them on uh, melted and would no longer work, so no current was was passing through. Solaire were absolutely fantastic, very responsive. The first time one failed, they switched them out, and then as the future ones uh, started failing, uh, they then offered us the upgrade to the uh, newer models, completely free of charge. Uh, and I've been running those, the uh, the Vitra, um, and I would st I would definitely recommend them. They've been they've been very good. However. Uh, as I don't like to see things in landfill, I ended up with one of these left over. They only collected uh, four of them for some reason. It was still working. I ran it in my office. It eventually died uh, in the same way the switch melted. The first repair I did is I removed the switch and then I just put a little connecting block in, a 13 amp connecting block, just to connect the wires together and bypass the switch altogether because my uh, initial hypothesis was that the switch itself wasn't rated uh, to work at um, that temperature uh, or that current load. Um, I was wrong because several months later it broke again. So let's have a look inside, let's see what's what and uh, I'll walk you through how I repaired it. So first of all getting the thing open was pretty easy. Uh, four screws that are holding it on, two on each side, L brackets that are attached to the glass panel that, that then go into the, the, the side of the, the metal case. Um, very heavy piece of glass, once you remove that there's really not a lot left to the device, as you can see. It's incredibly lightweight, in fact. You can see there you've got the heating element at the bottom with the fins, uh, then there's a protective shield, um, and then to the right you've got the mains gubbins coming in. At the top we have the, the capacitive touch uh, controls on, on the glass, um, and underneath that you've got the power supply, and that power supply is providing the, the power to the capacitive controls and to the Wi-Fi module, um, and acts as a relay for then turning on uh, the heating element itself. The heating element is just a very basic device that we've been using for God knows how many years. You, it's uh, just based on resistance alone just to get that, that heat. So first things first, uh, I hunt out the, uh, the mains wire, the repair that I'd previously done, and as you can see things aren't looking too good. I'd wrapped some tape around the uh, junction connector and you can see that it's actually melted um, and things are looking a, a little unhealthy. In fact, if you look at the, uh, if you can see with a keen eye on the on the red wire, that's the main um, the main wire that's the problem. It's actually gone white, and you can see it's starting to split near the spade connector, where clearly this has uh, been given far too much uh, temperature, um, and it's actually damaged the material on the on the outside of, of the wire. Um, so something's really not not happy here at all. Just to make my life uh, a little bit easier. Um, I've removed the, the safety switch that was uh, screwed to the side of the unit uh, just so I can get to the wires and, and, and get a good, good idea of what's going on. This is the safety device uh, itself, which I was rather enamoured with. I thought it was a pretty cool device. Um, at the top you have a, about a 15 millimeter ball bearing and below that there is a, a, a contact switch. So what happens is when the device is upright, the ball bearing sits on the switch and allows the current uh, to pass through. However, if the device tips over, the ball bearing tips over and out into that chamber, which disconnects the switch and the current doesn't pass through, which of course means if you have an electric heater and it falls over, you're not at risk, or certainly at a lot less risk, um, of, of a fire happening. The front panel itself seems to be spring-loaded. Not entirely sure why, because it just springs up to where the screws are. I'm not sure if that's some sort of vibration reduction mechanism. I'm Really not sure there at all, especially as the buttons themselves are also spring-loaded and they are what contact with the glass itself. So it, yeah, it didn't really make sense to me, but I'll, I removed the screws to get to the power supply uh, underneath. And as you can see, there, the, um, there's a two-pin connector for the thermistor, which is at the uh, bottom of the radiator, so it knows what the temperature in the room is. It kind of an external probe, it kind of pops out, out, to, the, out to the world. Um, and then there's a, a, another connector there, but that actually, actually connects to the board uh, below. With the front panel safely out of the way, 
I can now get full access to the uh, main wire that, that's coming in and I can remove this. Um, it uses a, a spade connector uh, on each end. You can see there on the top of the control panel, the um, Wi-Fi device that's just stuck on there. Uh, and that's what's obviously providing the, the Wi-Fi interface for everything. So my theory is it's a two kilowatt uh, heater and looking at the gauge of the wire, I think it's only rated for around two kilowatts and that's kind of pushing it a bit close to the bone. So my theory was to buy some high quality wire capable of handling a, a much higher wattage and then see how that does. So I found this selection of wire on Amazon. I believe it was around uh, 10 pounds, something on those lines for various different colors and, and uh, that came in a box. And this is designed to go up to, I think, 205 degrees uh, Celsius. And I think these will handle uh, more than double the amperage required. So I'm, I'm hoping that will mean uh, less heat will be produced and these uh, there's less chance of anything melting or, or damaging further down the line. While I was at it, I also bought some more spade connectors. So this turned out to be a more expensive repair than uh, I thought it would be, but these will come in handy later. Got a whole box of spade connectors. I believe that was around 10, 15 pounds as well, because uh, I didn't have any that were um, rated for the amperage that I needed them to handle. I won't go into too much detail on crimping the spade connectors on. One, because I didn't do a very good job of getting the footage, but the other is that there are lots of great tutorials out there on doing this. But the basics are uh, with these particular connectors is strip back a small amount of the wire, put the connectors on, and then using a crimping tool, um, it doesn't, it's not even a complex crimping tool, it literally just clamps the things together and we just check that they've got a nice tight fitting uh, and, that, and that'll do the job. I think the end result looks pretty good. I put some heat shrink on the end uh, and I've ended up with this nice new replacement wire. So the next part of the job is just to put things back together really. And once again, I must admit, did a bad job of the footage here. I'm still getting used to this camera uh, and I lost most of me putting it back together, but it's essentially the reverse of me taking it apart. The new cable just clipped on to those uh, spade ends and the whole thing came back together really nicely. So then from this point, it was as simple as putting the glass panel back on and the four screws to hold things back in place and uh, we're ready to test. So here you can see the radiator in my office and it is working. It, it has been a success. Whether or not this means it's gonna last, well, when I shot this, it was only, it was a couple of months ago and it's been going strong since then. So, so far I feel particularly happy. Uh, I did open it up and there doesn't seem to be any sign of fatigue on the wire. So I, I think I was correct in my assumption because all the other wires were looking fine. It was just this main wire that, that just wasn't thick enough. So um, if you happen to end up seeing one of these or have one of these that's problematic, maybe this would be the thing to look at to repair, uh, to get it up and running. Um, I must admit personally, I usually work with much lower voltages, much lower uh, amperage. So I was a little bit concerned about working on a device of this nature, just because there's so much more risk of uh, hurt, electrocution, of fire and these kinds of things. But you know, this all looked fairly straightforward and uh, hopefully you will agree that I've done the right thing. If you disagree, please correct me in the comments and uh, I'll update the video accordingly if you think I've done something wrong. So thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.